Holy crap, dude. So that woke me up. Hey guys, welcome back. Today is Saturday afternoon. I start on my own on Monday morning. And so today I, I did my makeup because I so miss putting makeup on and I had time. So I took the time to put makeup on because I'm probably not gonna be doing that very often. So today with my full makeup on, I'm driving to the yard to do a little loose detail job on the truck I'm gonna be driving this week because it's filthy and I'm a clean freak and it's been driving me crazy, but it's my trainer's truck. So I'm like, whatever. But now that I'm going to be in it full time for the week, I'm like, no, it's, <laughs> it needs to get clean. So I'm filled with anxiety uh, that like during the day is sort of mild, but like it's the worst overnight. It affects my dreams. I wake up feeling real stressed out because that's just how it's going to be until I'm settled and I'm not going to be settled for a bit. So I just keep reassuring myself that this is how it always is and then you always are fine. You know, just I know that, but it's still not easy. So I, I'm just thinking about all the things I need to buy and all the things I need to have prepared. And it's like, bro, calm down. You're gonna be back in a week. If you don't have every little thing you need, you're still gonna be okay. You're still gonna have connectivity. You're gonna have your phone. You're gonna have access to food. Hopefully you'll be able to get some showers in. Hopefully you'll be able to back the fucking truck at the <laughs> truck stop without any snafus. I'm that worried about that part of it alone just because I'm like I gotta get a shower and that means I gotta find a spot and back into it and not make anybody mad it's like really dude I'm gonna look back on this in probably just a month and be like laughing at myself so anyway off I go uh happy Saturday I hope yours is as sunny as mine is all right so I got a bunch of cleaning done in the truck today it's what I would refer to as clean ish <laughs> not up to my standards by any means but significantly cleaner than it was. I removed, oh, about 10 of 15 layers of dirt, I would say. And I'm enjoying a really tasty non-alcoholic blood orange IPA. I really love non-alcoholic beers. Uh, I'm in recovery, but I still enjoy the taste of beer and this works for me. It wouldn't work for everybody in recovery, but that's another subject which I will talk about in a future video for sure. I have been busy all day running around. After I did the cleaning, I went and did some shopping. A lot of what I'm doing is buying food. I definitely intend to discuss my eating habits and like ways that I intend to stay healthy on the road, which I've talked about a few times there's sort of an expectation that truckers should be unhealthy and how I disagree with that. It takes more effort and it's more difficult because I think that truck stops are their own type of food desert, you know, food deserts. Like there's lots of quote unquote food there, but it's not food that you really want to be putting in your body if you want to have optimal health. And one thing that I focused on in the stuff that I bought today was digestive and urinary health. And what I noticed right away in the short period of time that I was training, like even in the first week is constipation, which I'm not embarrassed to talk about because digestive health is critical to your overall health. Your uh, immune system quite literally lives in your gut. If you're not taking regular dumps, as someone once put it to me, has <laughs> always stuck with me like that. It's not good for your body. And it's a combination of inactivity, poor nutrition, and dehydration. It's all of those things. And then the dehydration also can have really deleterious effects on your urinary health. And that's for men and women. And that's serious. It's the slow accumulation of problematic occurrences as a result of poor habits that lead to disease in the long run. And I, I think these conversations are really important because it's easy to throw up your hands and just sort of be like, I can't do anything about it because I don't have access to something better. And instead you have to find a way to strategize. So that's what I'm trying to do. The first week, I won't even, first two weeks, I guess, I'm not gonna have access to a refrigerator. So I'm eating more ready to eat foods and bringing um, fruits and stuff that won't go bad too quickly that I can have things that are, in, are higher in fiber and intended to keep things moving as it were. So I will talk about that more in the future, but I'll probably make another video and share a little bit more specifically some of the stuff that I bought as I start off on the road full time and avoiding getting caught in the trap of eating crappy truck stop food that makes you feel crappy or not crappy. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's day one. Uh, I have arrived a little bit ago at my first pickup. 
which is in Libertyville, Illinois. Sort of an old, I don't wanna say stomping ground exactly, but I have family that lives there. So it's always interesting to come back this way. And it was a, a pretty easy drive, although I did deal with some, you know, downtown Chicago traffic, but that's nothing too unfamiliar for me. I am racked with anxiety because that's what my brain likes to do to me when I have to do something new and scary, especially without anyone here to lean on. And that's, that's the big difference today is like, you know, when you have someone with you who can correct you when you make mistakes or when you're about to make a mistake, more importantly, or just someone sitting there with you to witness everything that's going on around you, it really makes a huge difference. And this is really hard so far mentally for me. I feel like a sense of the anxiety and then a simultaneous sort of exhaustion, I think, from being anxious, you know? But I know I just have to get through this. That's how it's gonna be. I feel like uh, I shouldn't talk about it too much more in these videos because I think I'm just sort of you know, repeating myself, but I'm also just trying to document the reality of my experience. And I, I always keep thinking to myself that you're gonna look back on this and be like, why did I get so worked up? I've been talking to myself, you know, while I'm driving, like, it's all good, you got this, <laughs> all this like affirmation. And that, that doesn't hurt, you know, it's better than being like, why are you doing this, you idiot? <laughs> There's just still this undercurrent of fuck, 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 fuck. <laughs> I'm driving this low to Ohio and it's like a five hour drive. So that's not too bad. I'll stop somewhere along the way for sure. At least one stop, a coffee stop, even though I already had some coffee and don't even tell me you, I know you're right. I shouldn't be drinking more coffee when I'm anxious. It's such a weird habit. Side note, when I got here, I checked in right away. He's like, okay, well, uh, you could just hang out there and he'll, he'll let you know when he's ready to load you. And I'm just thinking to myself, uh oh, I hope this isn't another, <laughs> I'll be sitting here for hours kind of situation, but uh, my drop off isn't until tomorrow morning. So they're not giving me anything crazy to start off with. This is the easiest possible thing. I'm not going a crazy number of miles. I'm not going through crazy terrain, but it wasn't difficult to get here, not too far from the highway. And I'm going to an industrial area, which I looked up already on satellite view and it's gonna be easy to get in and out of, I assume. Other than my overthinking, over worrying brain, which has plagued me for every damn day of my life, I'm doing just fine and everything's gonna be cool. So there you go. <laughs> All right, my first load is happening right now. This is it in progress, getting ready to tie this down in a couple here. He's got a few more stacks to load me up with and it's really nerve wracking uh, being the person who has to make sure that the stuff is loaded on the trailer correctly. But I'm my trainer is super communicative and is immediately responsive to any quest, questions I have. And I'm not leaving here until I've sent pictures and made sure that it's all good and all that stuff. So I'm not really alone. I'm alone, but I'm not alone. So that feels good. But it also feels cool to do this. And I had no problem backing in here. And I'm telling you, I think the backing, half the time my problem with backing was that I wasn't reading his signals well enough. I'm like thinking he's saying something and I'm reading him wrong and it's easier in a way for me to do it by myself. I... <laughs> I should say, I don't know how to put movie clips in my videos, but there's a clip from Wedding Crashers where the grandma goes, I'll do it myself, asshole. And I always think of that when someone's helping me with something. <laughs> you know, I just arrived at the drop-off in Ohio. It was a super long day. There was no, so I, I didn't take my 30 minute break and I should have really because I could have used it. I didn't realize how much I really needed that downtime. And then another thing that happened earlier is I pulled into a truck stop where there were spots that I could have backed into, but I was too nervous and hesitant to, to try to do it. So I just went through to the fuel pumps and just ran in and peed real quick and came back out got got another coffee a small one and I'm just gonna have to break through that discomfort of like being self-conscious when it's a fairly crowded truck stop which they often are and taking a risk on backing in and looking stupid having to do multiple tries and the reality is like it so much of it is in my head and I realized that today when I was at that other spot where for someone experienced that wouldn't have been a difficult spot to get into it was like a three-point 
back up, you know, kind of deal. We had to pull in, pull forward around a corner and then back in. It was enough of a challenge for me though. And I, I did it pretty quickly. And like other spots when I was with my trainer, I would have to like do multiple tries. And I think what I noticed that was different is like when there's nobody watching, I have a way easier time and I don't have to make so many attempts, but I get in my head too much when there's people watching and that's when I start to make like it just screw I start like overcorrecting and stuff like that this this truck is a little bit cramped it's smaller than the one I'm going to be in I am not going to have time to take any kind of an actual shower or any facilities to take a shower so it's the other kind of you know the wipes do let's do the wipes this drive was really stressful because I started to get really tired at the end I had one like kind of scary moment that happened where the road suddenly split off and I didn't catch it happening. I feel like driving at night still in rain and at night in areas where there's new terrain for me, all of those things combine to really make me nervous. So this was a a stressful ride in some ways, but luckily there wasn't very much traffic and that made it a lot less stressful than it could have been. And Tiffany Hadish kept me, kept, kept Oh my God, words. Tiffany Hadish kept me company the whole way with her friggin' hilarious book I listened to on audio. I'm still listening to it. It's like heartbreaking and hilarious and triumphant. And I love her so much. And I'll put a link somewhere in the um, description for like the audible or something because you should listen to it. If, if you can listen to things in the background, if you're a trucker, Listen to her story, man. <laughs> you will just die laughing and it'll keep you entertained. And you know, it's, I was like talking to, to it the whole time. I was like, what? Saying all this stuff. I get so many crazy things in her life. You're just like, how did this shit actually happen to this person? But anyway, <sighs> so I'm gonna get ready for bed and zonk out. And the delivery is at 7 a.m. And I'm not thrilled about that because there was also the time change. So I had to start work at 9.30 this morning, which is late as hell. But that was like 10.30 Ohio time. So I'm not, I don't have that much time to sleep. I'm like, man, this shit is not supposed to happen now. <laughs> Everything's supposed to be different. We'll see how it goes, but time to clean up and get to bed. What a gorgeous morning here in Ohio. I woke up earlier. And then I realized I probably didn't have to be up just yet and I went back to sleep for like another hour and I was having the best dream. You guys watch Ozark? <laughs> I, when, when my alarm went off, I was dreaming that I had hair like um, Ruth and I love her hair and I was looking in the mirror. Like it was in the dream, it was like reality meshed with the dream because it's this weird on and off sleep. Look at that sky, isn't it so pretty? Ah, oh, such a beautiful day. The weather feels so good. It's not fucking raining. It's not super cold. It just feels amazing right now. It was like I was dreaming that I took off, I always sleep with a hat on. I took my hat off and my hair was like in these beautiful blonde ringlets and I was like, oh, cool. <laughs> anyway, I guess if you're gonna have a good hair dream, that's cool, right? So I'm gonna try to check in, but I still have like an hour before I can before technically I can drive on my log. So the bay door isn't open yet that I have to back into. So it always comes back to me being self-conscious about stuff that I need to do instead of just being like, well, fuck it. This is the thing you do, you know, whatever. Oh, I'm just so glad it's such a pretty morning. Look at that sky. Sorry for my bad singing. You like that? That's every day, all day long. This seat makes me crazy, dude, crazy. <laughs> All right, I'm getting unloaded. It took me forever to back in here, even though, again, plenty of space. Some days it's just harder than others, I guess, but the guys that work here are super kind and helpful, and that made a huge difference. After this, I'm heading to pick up 46,000 pounds worth of building materials, and I was like, and it's only like an hour away, and I was so excited to be unloaded and drive an empty trailer for a little bit, and I was hoping it would stay that way for like a little while, but no, picking up another heavy, so, and then taking that to Southern Illinois, so we'll see how the rest of this day plays out. I, I am dying to like do some yoga. This weather is so beautiful. If there's a patch of grass over there. I would love it if I could just roll out my mat and do some yoga for a little bit, but unfortunately, it's not really in the cards today, so another time. I have a long weekend coming up though because I have a dentist appointment and I'm actually like, I've never been so glad to have a cavity. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, I'm gonna shower twice a day. I can't wait. I'm dying for a shower right now, I'm telling you.
right guys, this day has been an adventure. I keep trying to make this video. Let's see if I can do it this time. First of all, let me just say, God bless the awesome forklift operators of this country. <laughs> because there are some really cool guys doing that job that are so helpful. This place that I'm at in Ohio is, is a really very large facility and it's like there's a staging area, which I was supposed to go to first, but of course I didn't because I didn't read the very hard to read little tiny map that was on my phone correctly. So I ended up going in circles a couple of times before going in the staging area. Luckily they called me really quickly. Then this guy has this really heavy accent. I can't tell where from, but maybe like a Southern kind of accent. And he was just such a sweetheart and he helped me and he's driving his forklift backwards and directing me and helping me get around like where I thought I was gonna run over something because it, it's just tight quarters through here. And, oh man, that was just such a such a nice help. This, this whole day so far has been pretty stressful other than the drive-in, again, Listening to Tiffany Hadish's book, dude, <laughs> is making me laugh so hard. I just want to hug her for, for helping me get through these drives. Like, comedians are doing God's work for real. It's one of those places where you have to stay inside the truck while they're loading you. So, until they're done loading the truck, I have to sit in here. And then I will go and strap the load down and head out. I am dead set on getting a shower today. I feel super gross and I've been not talking about it because I don't want to harp on it but I've been dealing with a lot of neck pain this week it's been really hard and part of it is just strapping down the loads it's the specific physical action that is required for that it's this cranking motion with this heavy bar I'm kind of loopy I could use another coffee for sure a nice refreshing shower would be just dandy I hope that by the time I get to a truck stop that there's parking there. I was talking to my mom, she called me, we talked for a few minutes earlier, and I was telling her, you know what's gonna make me learn how to back real quick is the fact that taking showers is dependent on my ability to back this truck <laughs> into a space. And I was like, I, am, I'll be damned if I'm not gonna take showers every day. And then I was giving myself a pep talk a little while ago and I was like, it's okay. If you have to, it's too much, if it's congested at the truck stop, you're just gonna drive over to the on-ramp and park the truck and walk back over. You need to go for a walk anyway. Like, I don't want to do that, but I will fucking do that if that's what it takes for me to get a shower. If it's too crowded in the parking and I don't feel comfortable. What else was I going to say? Oh my God. Okay. So the trip here, when I put the address in the GPS, the fucking first thing it says is there's areas of the recommended route that say no trucks allowed. And guess whose ass got stuck in a residential neighborhood? I'll tell you what, you, <laughs> you haven't lived until you have towed a 53 foot trailer, a Conestoga, which is different because it's easier to damage that shit. You haven't lived till you've driven one of those through a residential neighborhood with a whole bunch of signs everywhere that say no trucks. And you're just like, I know I'm not supposed to be here. Please, I hope there aren't any cops. I hope I don't take out anyone's trees. I hope I don't fucking take out this trailer. I'm just like, oh my God, I came this close to taking out a stop sign, I swear. <laughs> and I was like inching around it and I was just like, oh my God. And of course there was a lot of traffic and I was just like, oh my gosh. And then I was in like the little downtown and all these small towns have these little downtown areas that have like a lot of traffic lights and usually a fair amount of traffic even though there's maybe no other traffic anywhere else you know holy crap dude so that woke me up i'm super glad i did that little bit of stretching earlier a lot of times there just aren't good opportunities to stop and like let me spend this half hour i have doing yoga because you're not in the right environment where it's it's kosher to do it if that makes sense <laughs>
cardio. We're just gonna go ahead and deem this rookie mistakes day. <laughs> I need to hit the road. I just had what might have been, it was in the top three best showers of my life. I'm in Ohio and it's humid and uh, I learned a couple of important lessons today of uh, trucking. Number one, have clothes for all different weather because you can't necessarily plan ahead and be like, where am I going this week? Because the way it is, at least the way I'm trucking, it's like every day is a surprise. You could be in rainstorms, you could be in some snow here and there, and now it's like 67 degrees probably and humid. So I had a hilarious, to some people probably, mishap where long story short, I ended up facing the fuel island trying to figure out how I could back out, realizing that wasn't gonna happen with a bunch of dudes staring at me from their windshields with trucks behind them. They needed to get out of the fuel island. So if that ain't fucking embarrassment and pressure, I don't know what is. So I'm just gonna talk, <laughs> I'm just gonna chalk it up to getting it out of my system now. Let's hope that's all it is, because this day, man, <laughs> residential neighborhood, wrong way facing fuel islands, got out of there, ended up coming back to the off-ramp because that truck stop was so packed and there, there were a whole bunch of the reserve spaces open, but I was like flustered and it was crowded as fuck. One minute, then those spaces kind of opened up. I didn't know how much they cost. I don't want to be blowing money on shit like that. So I'm like, fuck this. I'm going to park down the street. I'm going to walk back over there. And that kind of sucked because I just took this shower and then I got sweaty again. But you know what? Fuck it. I still feel so much better than I did. I'm going to go hit the fuel stop in a little while here. I got myself some little Auntie Anne's pretzels, which are like a childhood favorite. So that's always like comforting. I've got my Clem Clementines or whatever the hell these things are. I love these. I love eating them while I'm driving. They're like also becoming and quickly becoming a comfort thing. And dun, 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 off I go. Wish me luck. Let's hope the mishaps have happened already. Good morning, Farmer Jana here. I always feel like I look like a farmer when I'm wearing like short sleeves or sleeveless with overalls, but I think that's going to be a thing. I need some, I need some warmer weather clothing. A ASAP. Just um, leaving this drop off. These guys were super efficient, unloaded me so quick. That was really nice. It's a beautiful morning now that the rain has subsided. Even when it was rainy and cloudy, it was still pretty out. But it's always not so bad when it's not like a heavy rain that's hard to drive in. I don't mind a little mist. Headed to another location to pick up some stuff. <laughs> you could say I'm a truck driver. Other than neck pain, chronic issue these days but everything is going great today so like the the good feeling from that shower yesterday is carrying over for me so wish me luck for a nice smooth drive ahead so this is what I'm dealing with right now I'm completely soaked like just completely soaked this is a rain resistant jacket so it helped a little bit but I'm sweating balls underneath it so I'm drenched in sweat and I'm soaking I just tied this load down I'm in Southern Illinois. I have to drive it to Indianapolis in this weather. Just as soon as I pulled the Conestoga closed and got ready to tie it down the rest of the way to get back in my trailer or back in my truck, it started really pouring. So I'm gonna try to wait here for a minute before I finish securing this, the trailer because I'm already so drenched, but I don't wanna get completely soaked through my clothes. I have no way to dry my clothes. By the time I get to any truck stops, I guess there aren't very many truck stops in Indianapolis, so they get um, full really fast, so it's likely I won't be able to park there. So a shower is probably not gonna happen. I just at least need something to eat. I'm really hungry and I really could go for a coffee. Sounds like the rain's lightening up a little bit here, so maybe I'll have just enough time to get this secured and get back in the, tr the tractor and change clothes really quick into something dry. I didn't bring enough clothes in general for this week. And luckily there's not other trucks waiting on me, so I can probably do that real quick and these guys won't be chasing me out of here. This is uh, this is hard stuff to deal with, like having soaking wet clothes, sort of a couple of spots I can hang them in the, in the tractor, but not that they'll really get dry, I don't think, and just not having a way to uh, get clean when you're sweaty and filthy and you're about to drive for hours, you know, and drenched. Good morning from the rest area. I'm really, really happy to say that it's a sunny day today. It's a beautiful day. It's very cold though, and I 
really had a hard time sleeping because it was so cold in this truck. When you run the truck for heat, the diesel fumes are intense and it gives me headaches and I'm like, I don't think this is good for me. It's really a frustrating issue. I guess the answer is pretty simple. Bundle up, right? So that's what I've been trying to do. And I really need to stop and get a power inverter because all my devices are dying and I have no way to charge them. I just did my pre-trip. I'm letting the truck warm up a little bit and then I'm about to head out to my drop-off, which is pretty close to where I'm at. And I'm hoping I can hit a truck stop on the way there and get a coffee. That would be super nice to warm my aching, chilled bones. But I will say, despite the fact that this rest area had a bathroom that quite literally smelled like there was maybe a body in the locked closet. I honestly, I almost would rather be on an off ramp like I was last night. I actually slept so much better on the on ramp because it was, sorry that ray of sun is a lot. <laughs> it's like, no, here I am. <laughs> there, that's a little bit better. I thought it would be cool because I'm like next to a tree there's no trucks immediately on either side of me, but it was because of where I'm situated. It's just trucks going by me all night long and just the sound of engine brakes and diesel fumes and it was very uncomfortable to sleep in. So I'm sitting at a truck stop and uh, I really could use a shower, but uh, I'm waiting for my boss slash dispatcher to give me a load. I'm parked in an area that is, I'm not supposed to be parked in, but no one's, I'm waiting until someone yells at me to move. Or if obviously one of these trucks needs to get out, then I'll have to take a lap. It just makes me think about something. This is, this is like a truck stop parking, okay? Part of it. And it makes, I keep hearing something in my head that my dad said to me one day that just is over and over in my head. He said, trucking is very inconvenient life. I think that was like the perfect way to sum it up because it really is. It's like there's nowhere to park. There's always someone waiting for you to move. You're always waiting on someone that was, those were other things that he said. I wish there was a spot where I could park this truck and go inside and take a shower while I'm waiting for this load, you know, but there's not. And I know I could take a lap around the parking lot, but the odds of finding a parking spot are very slim and especially not that I feel comfortable backing into. Although at the job site earlier, I had to do a back that was a little bit tricky and I did it perfectly on the first try and it, it made me realize that a lot of the time my problem when it comes to backing is just improper strategizing and then overcorrecting. And especially when I'm nervous, I feel self-conscious, that's when I tend to make mistakes. And it's like when I just trust myself and I think it through, a lot of times I can do it much better. And the guy at the job was super cool and I told him, I was like, it might take me a few tries. And I had been talking to him and the other guys while they were unloading me a little bit. And I told him like, my dad's been a trucker for a long time. And he was like, few tries, shit. And he was like, your dad would be so proud of you. I was like, oh man, that was cool. That made my day so. I'm drinking some coffee. I'm eating a chicken biscuit. It's the junkiest thing I've eaten all week. And I'm glad because I need something like calorically dense and with some fat, like some fucking grease in it to keep me going because I, I've been living on a lot of fruit and stuff, which is great. I feel I feel good eating that kind of stuff and it's helping do what I needed it to do, which is keep my, my gut in check. Fuck, I wish I could just park this truck and go take a fucking shower. That would be so nice right now. But instead I'm sitting here where I'm not supposed to be trying to wait to get a load and who knows how long that'll take. Maybe I'll take a lap and see if I can find a spot. You never know. Oh, someone's pulling out right now. Hmm. We'll see. Will I have the guts to attempt it? Probably not. I'm at a pickup. I just came through this whole area of all these amazing, beautiful country roads where I was not supposed to be. But thankfully there was like no traffic. I mean, these are like country roads, all farms. It's so beautiful, I'm so grateful. It's a nice sunny day today. And now I have to do what looks like kind of a difficult back. And I told the guy, I always tell him, which I probably shouldn't, but I told him, I'm like, I'm new. So just give me a little extra time. To, it might take me a minute. And he was like, oh, we've had guys who've been doing this 10, 20 years and it takes them, or 10 years and it takes them 30, 40 minutes. I'm like, oh no, it's not gonna take me that long. I'd be, I'm like, I'll get embarrassed if it takes me 15, which it could. So. The hard thing about this back in particular, there's plenty of room to get myself straightened out before I go into it. 
but the hard part is when it's sunny outside and bright and you're backing into a dark dock and that's what I'm about to do and it's a pretty narrow space and I got to get really close to this wall that's on the one side of me because that's where they're gonna load me from so wish me luck this is where I just backed right here yeah <laughs> so now I gotta figure out how I'm gonna get this up because yeah, there's not really room to do it the way I normally would, so I'm gonna have to get creative, I think. Hooray, I finally got my shower. This truck's a rockin' and not for the fun reasons, it's because it's windy as hell. So I'm glad I'm loaded with about 40,000 pounds. It's a good, heavy enough load to keep me more stable on the road with wind, but not such a heavy load that it's a bitch to drive. About to drive to Ohio, it's gonna take me about three and a half hours, a little less. Yeah, about three and a half hours. I'm listening to a, a true crime podcast called Morbid, and I already burned through all the episodes of the Chelsea Handler podcast. <laughs> it's so good. I listened to it like the whole time I was with my trainer when it was like those super early morning hours. But anyway, shower here was iffy, but it was a fucking shower. I will take it. I feel a lot better, but I it was so relaxing for some reason that now I just want to take a nap. But no naps for me. I'm gonna drink another coffee. I'm overdoing the caffeine. I know, we'll talk about it later. <laughs> and I'm eating another tasty oatmeal with a bunch of good stuff in it. And I'm going to drive and listen to horrible stories about murders. <laughs> so I'll catch you on the flip side. So I'm having a really interesting morning so far. I um, have been a little bit turned around and lost at this immense, it's like a steel mill, but it's like a complex of steel mills or something. But um, I'm delivering this steel banding. I wanted to take video inside the building, but I, I didn't want to get dinged by anybody. Cause, you know, you have to be careful with that. But it's like a Freddy movie in there. <laughs> it's crazy. So anyway, I'm waiting for someone to come direct me to where I can be unloaded because I guess I'm on the wrong side of the building I need to be on. The lady gave me this huge map when I came in. Check this out. This is the map she gives me. And she goes, you probably won't need it. And I still got lost because the map was confusing. <laughs> hey Amen. I'm practicing something that I'm thinking of as radical self-forgiveness, which is when I make mistakes, I just forgive myself and move on. I used to be a lot harder on myself, but this is all new. I'm not an idiot. I'm just learning new things. And I think about things in a lot of depth, which sometimes makes me get caught up in details and missing like what's obvious in front of me or whatever. And it's okay. That's okay. That's how, as my, I keep hearing my mom in my head, this is how we learn. And then I also keep hearing my dad, that's trucking. <laughs> Just a quick little summary video for the week while I sit in the Walmart parking lot before I go in to see if I can find something to shield the windshield and windows while I am sleeping overnight in the truck because this particular truck that I'm going to be in for at least a couple more weeks doesn't have any type of a curtain and I feel like I am in a very small fishbowl and it's not a very reassuring feeling being a woman alone out on the road in a vehicle like that where you have like no privacy. So the last day I was like hanging my scarf and like my sweatshirts in the windows and I'm just like, this is ridiculous. I need to remedy this situation. So that's just one example of some things that are going on in my current situation that aren't really working for me. I'm of the mind of like, I wanna keep it real in my videos and just share this is my journey, this is my experience, because also I know there's other people that'll see this that are getting into it, you know, getting into trucking for the first time. And I think it's really important to respect your worth and know, know your value and recognize when things are working for you, whether or not they are, you know, and be able to like really articulate that for yourself and make decisions based on that. And that historically has been a real challenge for me at jobs. I have a long pattern of getting stuck in places where I wasn't being challenged. I wasn't happy with the way things were being done. Uh, and the way it affected me and, and my bottom line, whether it's not just my income, but also my responsibilities, my 
progress and I'm in trucking for growth. I'm in trucking to make progress, especially in the financial sense, but also just as a person. I am intentionally doing something that has a, a high learning curve and a high amount of risk because overcoming obstacles is something that appeals to me and growing my brain and growing my confidence and growing my skill sets all of that stuff really appeals to me and that's why I'm doing it. Because I bring that to the table, I know I'm worthy of having a situation that serves me. So that's kind of where I'm coming from, where I'm I'm like, okay, this is the situation as it stands now. Here's what I am happy with. Here's what I'm not happy with. And I need to just keep doing the math on that and, and make decisions going forward based on that. So that's kind of where I'm at. My takeaway from this this first week on my own, there's so much, it's like so much going through my mind. Something I've heard other truckers say before that I think is one of the most apt ways to describe it is that if you're doing it right, you're always learning. I think it was uh, Shelby who talked about that and saying that Shelby from Happiness by the Mile, who was one of the people who inspired me to, to get my CDL. She said one of the things that she loves about trucking is that you're always learning new things and there's it's a, just an endless amount of things to learn. And I, I really get why she said that and I really like that too. I think too, there's an aspect of it where when you're a female, you're conditioned from the time you're very young to feel like you are sort of, you need to be funneled into this potential career path and this is what women do and this is what men do. And I love that we're in a world now where, you know, someone like me who has a background that has nothing to do with trucking can be like, I want to learn this set of skills now. And it makes sense for me. And I'm excited to learn something that is really challenging like that for me. And in a world where you don't see a lot of people like me out there doing it, but it's, it's changing over time. It's changing. There are more and more badass, strong, fearless women getting behind the wheel, <laughs> which can only make things better because diversity is, is great, you know? Well, it's only been a week, so my reflections are based in a lot of ignorance because I've only experienced a little bit so far, but it's a very hard life. It's a very abrasive life. It's very limiting. As my dad put it, it's very inconvenient. The resources that are available for truckers are designed to squeeze truckers dry of the money that they work so hard for, not to, to make trucking more accessible and to honor the investment of their blood, sweat, and tears and, and time that's irreplaceable. Uh, these things in my mind deserve legislation, reformative legislation. And that's something that, that I think I will have in my mind every day that I'm doing this job. I, I think that truckers are getting a raw deal and I'm experiencing it firsthand and I'm glad to get that experience because I want to walk in the shoes of other people in my life. That is something that really matters to me. So I'm glad I'm having this experience as difficult as it is, as inconvenient, uncomfortable, vulnerable as I feel sometimes. I have only had one incident so far where men were being creepy assholes to me and that is the rest of the time men have been nothing but helpful and respectful and if that's maybe because they're happy to flirt with a pretty girl while they're doing their job, I'm fine with that because guess what guys, I'm lonely too. <laughs> so feel free as long as you're cool about it and not a weird fucking creeper, you can flirt, you know, it's cool. I really love the fact that I had so much physical labor this week. My whole body was sore. I love that feeling, but it was also sore in ways that weren't good, like the neck pain and also um, not having particularly comfortable sleeping circumstances, especially being cold, not being able to run the truck that I'm in because of um, noxious fumes. Obviously, anyone who hears that might make some comments and I'm probably going to concur with you. That is not acceptable. So that's something that I'm going to have to um, deal with going forward. And that's going to play a part in the decisions that I make about whatever situation I am in or choose to change or whatever. Um what else can I say? This person is driving way too close to my car. Not cool, bro. Not cool. I've driven a Sprinter van before and that's not how you drive that shit. Anyway, I keep hearing my boss in my head, swing wide, swing wide with his accent. <laughs> Every time I turn, I say that out loud, I'll be like, swing wide, swing wide. It's helped me, man. I've, now I swing wide to an extreme and that's fine. I could see ways in which I feel like I'm doing a great job for someone who's as new as I am and I can see ways in which I have a dramatically long way to go and I need to stay continuously humble and never get ahead of myself and be like I'm doing great because 
that's that's not the right attitude to have. You need to respect the the gravity of of what you're doing, the inherent danger, the responsibility. That stuff needs to be the most prominent stuff in your mind when you're doing this kind of work. So, I'm really glad I had the experiences that I've had so far this week. I just want to end this video by saying how incredibly grateful I am like in advance, because I already know I'm going to get a lot of helpful comments. I'm so grateful for people who have like someone who I've been communicating with through Instagram, who found me through my channel, who has been really awesome about noticing things that I showed in my videos that were not done correctly and politely telling me that I was doing something wrong or that could be done differently. I am here to take advice from people who have had different training than I have or have more experience because again, it's nonstop learning. I would rather have someone correct me and do something better the next time than just have them not want to tell me and like have me make a mistake that has consequences. I also am just really uh, grateful that people are so kind and warm and supportive of someone going out there and doing something new like I'm doing. Like thank you to everyone who takes the time to comment and encourage me. It really resonates with me. It really keeps me going, especially when I didn't, I haven't had many chances to check my YouTube or whatever. I've been so busy. But when I did finally take some time and check messages, I was just like, this is so cool. Like people really spend time writing long comments with a lot of detail. And it's just like, fuck yeah, people. Thank you. Thank you for caring. Thank you for being you. I really appreciate you. So that's my summary of this week. Thank you so much for watching. I will try to keep these as consistent as I can because I know my schedule is only going to get more intense. But thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. You know the drill. I will catch you on the next one.